has little country in which to do business. And one could interpret that dif different ways, uh, but some of them mean let's make it more competitive. And they talk about competitiveness as labor costs, reduce labor costs, and everything will be hunky dory. And of course, in a free market, one of the obstacles to the cutting of labor costs is trade unions. They interfere with the market, they're bad, and the sooner we get rid of them, the better. The truth is that trade union power has declined immensely in the last 50 years for two reasons, roughly, uh, broadly. Um, one is technological change. The big factory has shifted, it's gone offshore to China where they don't, but they do. We had a Chinese trade union leader in here, actually in this room, and he, as he was leaving, he says, so many members of you I says, we have 750,000, so he says, well, I have 25 million. We spend most of the time talking about the lack of freedom that the Chinese unions have, uh, which is um, not very much, but at least uh, it's better than it was. Um, but uh, basically, trade unions have, have been undermined both by the way the world of work has changed away from manufacturing and so on, and also by laws. And part of the, uh, one of the reasons, one of the things about trade unions, we can argue about this, and we'll have plenty of time for discussion, we can have a good heated argument on it if you like. Um, trade unions, one could argue, in, in, if you're really in a philosophical mood, well, trade unions actually are, are the architects of their own demise because the more successful they are in changing the laws and bettering the laws and so on, labor laws and other laws to protect workers and change workplaces for the better, which have changed dramatically uh, for the better, you don't need trade unions. And uh, one can argue there's a case for that. I don't argue that, but someone can do that. But um, I'm going to make a different argument than what you're used to. I'm going to argue exactly against what I just said at the beginning, that we should make this the best small little country in which to do business by screwing unions into the ground and making workers work for heck all and long hours and all the rest of it. I'm going to argue from an economist's point of view, it is imperative, uh, it is really important uh, that trade unions have a greater role and the collective bargaining is enhanced by governments, not just here, but any country that wants to be competitive should enhance collective bargaining. And the reason for this is the share of labor's income in countries throughout the world has been declining. And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. Um, and basically, um, I'm actually not president of the Statistical and Social Inquiry Society of Ireland any longer. I just, uh, another guy has, has taken over. But I was for the last three years. And in my farewell address, uh, I wrote a paper which took quite a long time. Because, but I've been working on it actually above, in a little way at the back of my head for years. And that is an analysis of the decline in labor share in national income not just in Ireland, but throughout the world. And over the last 30 years, labor share has been declining. And this is bad for economies. Why is it bad for economies? Because demand is falling. And demand is, why is it falling? Because most ordinary workers, and actually the self-employed, spend most of what they have. But what you've seen happening in the world is that the rich are getting richer and you don't believe how rich the rich are getting and also corporations are getting more powerful and richer and who owns corporations other corporations and rich people and to argue well actually your trade union pension funds own a lot of them and we do too and of course that's another story but um, essentially rich people and corporations don't spend you will notice any of you who are interested, and some of you probably bought, foolishly bought, Aircom shares. And if you have, you might have Vodafone shares. And Vodafone have sold a company in America called Verizon, 
And what are they doing with the money? Investing it in jobs? They are not. They're giving it back to the shareholders, of which some of you might be the unfortunate people who own them. But, um, and you hear a lot about that. But Vodafone, uh, Ryanair, loads of companies are giving back their money to shareholders. Companies are no longer, a lot of companies are not investing in jobs anymore. They're just propping up. Why do they give back money to their shareholders? They do it to prop up the share price. Uh, because why do they prop up the share price? Because they're not making money because they're not investing. And we've got into a, a spiral, and I, that's my argument essentially, that uh, the labour share of, of one of the reasons why we collapsed, and there was the world collapse in the 2008, was because there wasn't sufficient demand. Now you can add to it all the other stuff. As Andrew Kenny said, it was caused by greed and corruption. And um, I think greed and corruption was part of it. But the real cause was neoliberal economics of deregulation, privatization, all that stuff that we in trade unionists talk about. And behind that, there's another big factor, and that's declining demand. And um, the share in labor income has been hidden, particularly in Ireland, because we're one of the few countries uh, around where, our, where workers' wages, workers' wage, take the average workers' wage, may or may not know this, but I've done the calculation myself, took a long time, uh, after-tax income doubled between uh, the, the um, beginning of the Celtic Tiger era, which most people agree, agree it began in 87, and 20 years later, the average worker's wage doubled in real terms after inflation. That was fantastic. Um, but at the same time, while we were rising, uh, the other guys were rising faster, and that's what I argue about. But okay, over to, that's only the introduction, but um, I won't bore you too much with the, the detail. Trade unions, as I said, in most countries in the world, the share of national income has been in decline, and very much so in Ireland. Though because the cake has grown so big in Ireland, our standards of living have uh, uh, expanded. I look briefly at the reasons for the decline, and I talk about the implications, but I've really said what I'm going to say there. And East Ireland, as Enda Kenny keeps saying, is this the best little country in which to do business? Is it to be that way by screwing unions? And as you know, we have no rights to collective bargaining in this nice little country. Okay, this is, Ireland is over at the far end next to Finland for the decline in our share. And you can see only in a few countries, the Czech Republic, Denmark and um, um, ISL, I think that's Iceland, yeah, it is Iceland, um, have, has the labour share. That's since 1990. There's different ways of looking at it. I did this one myself um, from uh, OECD data from 1970, in other words, a much longer period. Ireland is green. Now, you might see at the top over there, our share, the labour share was over 90%. So I spent a day in the CSO office in Rathmines with the guys there who ha I happen to know quite well, asking them, we went over it in a big way and we scratched our heads. Actually, the truth was, back in the 90s, most companies in Ireland, were, or back in the 70s, weren't very profitable at all. They were also fiddling their taxes um, wholesale, and that was quite accepted. Um, how do I know that? I used to be a tax inspector in the 1970s, looking after the self-employed in Limerick, um, or trying to get them. But um, anyway, you can see that there has been a dramatic decline. And the interesting thing is that during the bubble, labor share rose again quite dramatically in Ireland. And that was, if you like, your bricklayers earning a thousand quid a week, and that kind of stuff. And we did do well for most workers. I know we'd like to get member right to admit that quite publicly, but we, we did rather well, especially as growth figures were all a delusion and uh, there wasn't really economic growth. And our recipe in 
international talks where we want uh, inflation plus a share of economic growth. And uh, now we can look back and say there wasn't growth, but we got a share of it anyway. But uh, the Irish figure is complicated by a thing called transfer pricing by multinationals. In other words, a lot of, um, of our, the internationally comparator figure of national income is GDP. In Ireland, it's better to use GNP, and the difference between the two is it's usually nothing in most countries. Here, it's 20%. It's an enormous difference, and it's multinationals uh, um, doing all kinds of funny things with their books. And I won't say that they're building their taxes. Um, now, I'm, I'm not going to go into that stuff, but I, my argument is we must not follow the American dream. Because the American dream has been broken since 1973, actually. Um, the American dream, did it exist? It certainly did. It was fantastic. After the Second World War, American incomes grew fabulously. Ordinary working people, uh, as they say in America, we became middle class. And uh, they, the GI Bill people went to universities. Ordinary workers, kids could go to universities and so on. This, everything. That was usually with one male earner. Now today, Americans have always, uh, in most cases, two earners. They're working much longer hours, and their incomes have not risen at all since 1973, except at one stage during Clinton's period. And I can bore you to death with that. Um, and by the way, I should say that the paper I did for the Statistical Society on which this is based um, is available on their website, and I can send a copy to Panula, who you have the link, but um, it's, it's called SSSI, Statistical and Social Inquiry Society of Ireland. The very learned name was set up in response to the famine in 1847, and it's been eating continuously ever since by the great and good. Um, so it was unusual to have a trade unionist as president um, of it. But, um, okay, in, in America, as I said,